we have to start with Clemson because we just found out they're going to be without their offensive coordinator, Tony Elliott, when they take on Ohio State. Dabo Sweeney looks very confident about that fact, despite all of that, when he got off the plane yesterday. But I want to ask you, what problems could this cause for Trevor Lawrence and the Tigers? I think it's one of communication and familiarity. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen this happen before a couple of years ago in the national championship game, Charlie. Alabama was facing Clemson. And as only uh, Nick Saban could do, he fired Lane Kiffin a couple of days before the game. Now, remember, Kiffin had already taken a job as a head coach somewhere else, so it was, it was a little bit crazy. But Jalen Hurts, the quarterback, had a, had, a, had a tough day, even though the, it came down to the final play, because he was used to that on-the-field communication with Kiffin. And, and I think you could see the same thing here with Trevor Lawrence and, and Tony Elliott. Tony Elliott is one of the best offensive coordinators in the country. We all know Trevor Lawrence is one of the greatest quarterbacks we've seen in, in modern times. So you, you have to think it, it, it could be an issue, especially this late in the game. Uh, and... And we're right now we're just finding we're trying to find edges uh, for, uh, any way we can to find an edge for Ohio State. And I think this becomes one. Yeah, Dabo said um, that he didn't vote Ohio State into his top 10 because of their schedule. So what do you make of that? And will that have any impact on the game? Dominic, uh, I don't think it's going to have a big impact. I mean, Dabo is just a walking billboard maker for the opponents, and it it hasn't seemed to slow him down. Uh, I know he wants to be the enfant terrible of of college football by saying all this crazy stuff, but we all know about how we got to this point. Uh, Dabo Sweeney's vote, frankly, doesn't matter. Uh, It's a coach's poll. It has no bearing on on what happens or or what ultimately uh, brought us to the college football playoff. And, and I just find it to, to be absurd that, 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 that he is coming up with this now. Uh, it's his right, though. I mean, you can't get too mad. Uh, it's his ballot, and, and you know, he, his stipulations are you have to play X number of games. But that's not how the Big Ten decided to do it. I know we've already litigated this conversation many months ago. But you know, ultimately, I think the big question is, does that schedule affect Ohio State? Uh, after only playing six games, uh, is that is that a disadvantage for them versus what Dabo Sweeney has said? I, I mean, Dab, Dabo and Dabo's given this game a little bit of a off the field character in terms of the back and forth. Uh, we're trying to make it as interesting as possible, Dominique, and, and that's certainly a, one of the most interesting aspects of it. But I, I'm not sure it's going to change one thing on the field. And, Paul, our draft expert, Todd McShay, recently dropped quarterback Justin Fields, who plays for Ohio State, from number two to number nine. So how much pressure would you say is on Fields to perform at a high level against this high-powered Clemson defense? He has not had a great year. Uh, and, and I think some of it is the inconsistency of the Big Ten schedule. Uh, there was a lot of stopping and starting because of their 21-day COVID protocol. And you know, he... he he, he got off to a good start, then he, then he struggled. He, he did not have a particularly good game uh, against Indiana. He wasn't great at times in, in other games. And I, I think some of that was, was, was the inconsistency of, of, of playing. And he also has a, had, had a thumb injury uh, in, the, in the last game. So I think there, there are a lot of eyes on Justin Field. Remember when the season began, there was a battle. There was a conversation. Who will be the better choice in the NFL draft, Justin Fields or Trevor Lawrence. That debate has gone away. I, I don't think it's over for Justin Field, and I, and I frankly don't think how he plays in this game will determine his draft. I think that's going to be more in terms of need, and especially how he performs uh, in the combine. But, but he is a very good quarterback, and, and I don't think anyone should lose sight of that in spite of what's happened during this rather bizarre season. All right, I'm going to bring you some more coaches' quotes, uh, Paul. Moving on to the other game. Brian Kelly, he said that he, him and his team have nothing to prove at this point. How should the Notre Dame fans feel about that? And do you agree? <laughs> I don't agree. Uh, I mean, Dominique, this is Notre Dame we're talking about. I mean, they're the biggest name in college football history. And I know a lot of young people you know, think it's all about Clemson and Alabama, uh, Ohio State, Oklahoma, but, but Notre Dame 
you know, thinks they invented college football, and in some ways they did. And for the head coach at, at Notre Dame to start, try to downplay the fact, well, you know, we haven't won a national championship in 30 years, and, you know, we're, we're, we're just happy to be here. I mean, I know that's not exactly what he said. I think what Brian Kelly is trying to do is lower the expectations uh, and, and make it more palatable for his players, try not to put any more pressure on them. But you cannot erase the facts. And the facts are very clear that Notre Dame has been awful on, on, on a big game setting. A Alabama beat them by 28 in the, uh, in the, in the, at the end of the 2012 season. And, and quite frankly, uh, being on the field that, that, uh, that night, you, you, you looked at them in warm-ups and you were surprised it was only 28. I mean, you were talking about men versus boys. I mean, Alabama looked like a professional team and, and, uh, and Notre Dame looked like a, a middling college team. But just from the athleticism, that has improved. I mean, Brian Kelly has done a great job of bringing this program back from f five years ago when they had a losing record, and a lot of people thought he should be run off. Uh, they've been in the playoffs twice, but that still doesn't excuse the fact that they're not competitive on this big stage. The only thing Brian Kelly has going for him is he does have that big win at, at Notre Dame this year against Clemson, but he let it get away in the rematch uh, two weeks ago. And, and that's and, and it's very likely we're going to see the same thing. I, I mean, Dom, Dominique, <laughs> you look at the matchups in this game, and it's hard to find an edge for Notre Dame other than the fact that they are the University of Notre Dame. Al Alabama beats them at every step uh, right across the field. And that's why the line, which is more than 20 points, is the biggest in the college football playoff history.